Hello, uh, I'm Ginger Pan. You can find out my background by just typing my name in Google. I've uh, set myself a, a, a task of explaining the finite line method in just under 30 minutes. <clears throat> so I'm going to do that in two episodes. So this is the first one. And I start by introducing energy method, which is a, 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 a good starting point to introduce the finite element method. So let me just draw a, a sort of my typical sort of general engineering structure, anything uh, to represent the structure. <clears throat> so the structure is supported, and you apply a, a, a load there, <clears throat> and under that load, the structure will deform. So I'm going to exaggerate the deformation. So let's say that the structure has deformed <laughs> into something like that. So what we have is we have a mechanical load. Let's call that P. Under that load, there is a displacement. Let's call that U. Yeah. So. This is like, you know, you, you have a structure, you apply load, and when you apply load, you do work, yeah? And the work you do, if this is an elastic structure, the work you do is transferred into the elastic energy of that system, all right? So this whole system here, so we have a strain energy U, and yeah, the force does work, and that become strain energy. <clears throat> now I'm gonna do something quite strange. So I'm going to apply that load, yeah, apply that load, and then keep it there. So I'm not going to change that load, but I do a little dream. And in that little dream, I'm going to imagine this displacement, yeah, this deformation, this displacement changes a little for no reason. Yeah, it's not like I, I push harder, I don't, I just apply the load, leave it there, and that I, I dream, in my dream, I just make that displacement change a little. So that little change, again, I have to exaggerate it. So that's the local change of deformation, it's my imagination. And let me represent that by delta u. Yeah, so this is one, one variable, it's not delta times u, the whole thing is called delta u. So in that little dream, this force, it doesn't, I don't push it harder, it doesn't increase, but because the point has moved a little bit further, so that force will do work. So that for, the work done by that force will be P times delta U. Yeah, so the work done by the force over that imagined change of displacement. But the thing is, even your dream has to follow energy conservation, the rule of energy conservation, because we're assuming this is an elastic system. So that work is going to become the virtual change, the small change of the strain energy U. Let me repeat this again. Work done over that imaginary change of displacement goes into the imaginary change of the total strength of the system. So this is called the virtual work, imaginary, so hence the word virtual, virtual work, and this is a virtual change of the total strength of the system. So if we just, we just rearrange that, we have P is delta U, delta U, yeah? And we, if you are, we all know the definition of differentiation. What we can do, because this is my imagination, this small change is my imagination. I can imagine a tiny, 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 tiny small change. Yeah? So I make this really, 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 really small. And therefore, this is going to be very, very small. So when that happens, this will be simply u. So this is the differentiation of strain energy with respect to that displacement. 
So it's a very simple energy sort of argument. It's a strand because I'm using sort of imaginary change. But this is quite interesting because we have three things here. We have a strand energy, total strand energy system. We have a load, mechanical load. We have a corresponding displacement. And these three variables, yeah, there are three things, P, U, and small u, are connected in such a simple manner. Yeah? So if you differentiate with uh, your total strain with respect to the displacement, you got a force. So this was called Castiano's first theorem. So this is called Castiano's first theorem. I'm going to expand that a little bit, but basically this is. And it was established long, 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 long time ago, hundreds of years ago. And it was a, a, a very nice theorem, but then sort of people forgot about it because it wasn't much very useful. There's, there's a Castellano second theorem, which the textbook talks about a lot, but, uh, and people use that. But let's not worry about that, but people do use that, but the full theorem people basically sort of ignore. Until the computer age, and this theorem itself becomes the foundation of the finite element method. So before I tell you about the finite element method in my next episode, I need to expand this a little bit more, because here, look, I'm just looking at one force. So let me just uh, uh, clear this. So I'm going to make the same argument again, but this time, this time I have several faults. I have P1. Uh, let's say that's my. So same structure here, but this time I have several forces. So I have another force acting here. I have another force acting here. So let's say that P1 that P2, and that's P3. So this will be underneath there, so this is not exactly right. So the material will deform a bit, so the deformation will be exaggerated like there, so false. So corresponding to that P1, there will be a U1, corresponding this P2, we call this U2, and corresponding to this P3 there, there will be U3. Yeah? So let's say, just extend that problem a little bit. So we've got three forces. Uh, so what's going to happen to that Castellano theorem? Well, not very much, because what I can still do, because it's my imagination, I have the freedom to do my dream. I have free, totally free in the dreams what I do. So in my little dream of that imaginary chain, I do the same imagination. So I say, okay, this displacement, this bit, changes a little, right? But there's no change to that displacement as no change to that displacement. The only change I'm going to allow is delta U2. It's my choice, right? I'm going to allow that. So the, the, the argument I'll put down will be that in this case, that work does, that force do, does no work. That force does no work. Only this force, P2 here, does work. It's the same thing again. So it will be P2 times delta U2 is balanced by the virtual change of the total strain energy. Right? So again, I rearrange and then I use the argument of limitation. So I make uh, a limit, so I make this extremely small. So we're going to have P2 is partial differentiation with respect to U2. Right? And then I can make that. I can make the same argument for P1. I can make that same argument for P3. So basically, what I can do is a force I and its corresponding displacement, they are related to they are related to each other through this nice relationship. Yeah? Total strain energy, displacement, force, and they have to be corresponding to each other. So that displacement correspond to this force. So this is the displacement under this force in the direction 
of this force and where this force is applied. So this is the, the general expression of Castellano first theory. It's very general theory because, you know, all we did in this process, we didn't assume anything. The, the structure can be linear, non-linear, and it can be anything. It can be a car, a bridge, a mobile phone, anything, right? So it's a very powerful and very general sort of theory, and it relates three things together. And I'm going to show you in my you know, next, uh, next episode, I'm going to show you how that is going to lead to the all-powerful finite element analysis. Thank you.